This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content organization or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Even though your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective organization can be understood only by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, you should. Alright, let's get started. This tutorial focuses on one area of organization, cohesion. You need to understand what makes prose cohesive if you've ever been told your writing doesn't flow or your sentence structure is awkward or choppy. And even if you've never received that kind of feedback, you should understand it well enough so that you can provide effective feedback to other professional writers. We'll be viewing examples from a letter written by a senior manager responsible for purchasing at a retail company. The company has a new socially responsible procurement program. The quality in this video makes it nearly impossible for you to actually read the letter. If you're a student using our book, your instructor can get you a copy of the document. You can also download it at prosewrite.com. The primary audience for this letter is made up of the salespeople who work for the company's current suppliers. Although they're experts on their own products, they're not experts on the new policy at the writer's company. So they're likely to be somewhat skeptical of or sensitive to the message in this letter. It's going to affect their future sales. This means the writer has to develop informative and persuasive content to increase the reader's readiness to accept the message. Although you may think the writer has all the power in this situation, the writer's company must have good relationships with their vendors or suppliers. So in this tutorial, I'll explain three things you need to know to create cohesive prose. I also hope to convince you that cohesion matters in this letter. The first aspect of cohesion you need to understand is how to distinguish between given and new information. Look at this sentence from the letter to suppliers. In general, readers of English assume that the predicate slot, basically that means from the first verb form to the end of the sentence, that that predicate slot contains information that's unknown not at the surface of the reader's consciousness, hence called new information. So in this sentence, our currently reviewing is the new information. Readers also assume that the subject slot, and basically that just means whatever comes before or to the left of the predicate, contains information that is already known to them. You can assume readers have that information nearer the surface of their consciousness. So it's called given information. In the example you're looking at here, we is the only given information in the initial sentence of the letter. If a writer begins with new information, readers are at a disadvantage. Readers search for given information at the front of every sentence, not only the initial one, as a means of connecting what the writer has to say that's new to something that's already known and therefore at the surface of the reader's consciousness. So if you look at the second sentence here, which is a differently phrased version of the sentence above, readers who are already thinking about procurement will read this sentence more quickly than those who are not. 
that's because the writer has treated procurement policies as given information by placing it in the subject slot. Now that you can distinguish given from new information, you should also know English allows different ways of signaling that information is given. For example, the use of repeated words or phrases or the use of demonstrative pronouns like this help to identify given information. The second aspect of cohesion you need to understand is the preferred arrangement of given information between sentences. So look at this sentence from the original version of the letter. When readers get to the second sentence and see audits in the subject slot, they know they should treat this as given information. But it isn't mentioned in the previous sentence, so readers are likely to spend a little extra time processing the information here. The writer erred by presenting audits, information that's new, in the subject slot. The arrangement you have here, given information to new to new, is not cohesive. You might imagine readers commenting that the passage is awkward or choppy or that it doesn't flow. Now look at the revised passage. Here, we is used as given information in the subject slot of the second sentence. Now this arrangement, given information to new information to given information, creates cohesion. It bears repeating that if readers care enough, they'll work as hard as they need to to get the message no matter how your information is arranged. But they will develop a negative stereotype about you. Of course, if readers don't care enough, they simply won't put forth the effort. In both cases, the writer's message is inefficient. In the second case, it's ineffective as well. Now, the third aspect of cohesion you need to understand involves the cohesive patterns for arranging given a new information among sentences. Let's consider a passage from the letter, the one that we just looked at. The first pattern creates a link between two sentences by repeating the same information in the subject slot of both. In our example here, the pronoun we is used in the subject slots for each sentences. So the first sentence we are currently reviewing, the second sentence we are also conducting. The predicate in both sentences presents new information. This pattern is called a, B, A, C, where the repetition of A from one sentence to the next creates the link. Now, the second cohesive pattern creates a link by repeating the new information from the previous sentence as the given information in the following sentence. So the example from the letter to suppliers shown here, we've got identify products as new information in the predicate slot of the first sentence. And then it appears in the subject slot of the second, where it's given information. This pattern is called ABBC, where the repetition of B creates the link. Now, these two patterns can also be combined within a single paragraph. OK. Time to check your understanding of cohesion by revising a passage you haven't seen before. This one comes from a job announcement. The specific question asks that you increase cohesion by using one of the cohesive patterns. If you chose the ABBC pattern, your revision would look like this. With the new information in the first sentence, that's applicants, used as the given information in the second sentence. If you chose the ABAC pattern, your revision would look like this alternative, with the given information in the first sentence, positions, used as the given information in the second sentence. Either revision improves the cohesiveness of the passage. So I've been referring to a letter written by a retail company explaining a new socially responsible procurement policy to their suppliers. 
Revising to create more cohesive prose in that letter increases the efficiency with which readers get the writer's message. That's because cohesion describes the links made between pieces of information presented in consecutive sentences. Those links are the result of two patterns for arranging given in new information. They result in prose that flows or is not choppy or awkward. It's worth reminding you that most experienced students have difficulty accepting the importance of efficiency because it's so contrary to their experience in academic writing. Please remember, a teacher's job is to make sense out of what his or her students write. But a professional can either ignore inefficient documents or find ways to retaliate when writers waste their time and energy. One way writers can waste the reader's time and energy is by focusing on sentence variety instead of creating cohesion. Good organization ensures not only the effectiveness but also the efficiency of workplace messages. And before this tutorial ends, let me say that there is just no way to learn to write your own workplace documents without actually applying the ideas in this tutorial as you read and analyze new ones. Reading thoughtfully precedes writing successfully.